So many games on the market depict war as something glorious. They ask you to crush your enemies, stomp them into the dirt, and to feel good about it. But Dawn of Peacemakers from Snowdale Design flips this idea on its head, asking you to prevent a war instead of winning one. But is the path to peace one that's exciting to tread? Let's find out and discuss five things about Dawn of Peacemakers. In Dawn of Peacemakers, you play through a campaign of 12 scenarios, each one adding new elements and unlocking new units and special abilities. You control one of four adventurers, trying to end the fighting between the Ocelot and Macaw empires before too many people die. During the adventurer phase, you can play as many cards as you like from your hand, each allowing you to either influence one of the armies, move your figure around the board, add fortifications to protect certain units, or other special abilities unique to each card. After you've resolved your adventurer phase, the armies get to act, using a combination of a ploy card from their ploy deck and a task card from their task deck to control the AI and actions of their army for that turn. As units are defeated and other effects are triggered, each army's motivation will slowly count down. In most scenarios, if you can get both armies to have a motivation of one or two before either army is completely defeated, you win the scenario. Starting with a pro, this game is beautiful. The double-sided board is gorgeously illustrated, the tiles are thick and chunky, the miniatures are just adorable. Add on strong writing in the narrative, the unique theme of ending a war instead of winning it, and other absurd touches like including an envelope and letter for every adventurer in the game, and you're left with an overall design that is beautiful and thematically engaging. On the negative side, you will sometimes have turns where little to nothing happens. Because the orders are randomly drawn, some Sometimes the armies will do things that make no sense, like sitting there when they should attack, or moving when they have nowhere to go. Additionally, at times, especially early in a scenario, your best move might be to do nothing and just build up a huge hand, which, while strategically interesting, isn't necessarily a lot of fun. Thankfully, this issue mostly occurs in just the first few scenarios and generally disappears later in the campaign. Back to a pro, I really enjoy the multi-use cards in the game and the challenge it presents to the players. Figuring out which cards to use for each of their different effects and when to play a card for its special ability is a nice little puzzle. Additionally, because it's generally impossible to reach both armies and control them fully, you have to carefully prioritize which actions you'll take and what you'll focus on. On another pro, I love the campaign here and all the unlockables you get. There are so many elements that are unlocked after each mission, and some of them are just ridiculous. I'm not going to spoil any, but man, there's some really, really cool stuff here. The campaign itself is engaging with a lot of variety and surprises to be discovered. Additionally, this is my favorite type of campaign, similar to Arkham Horror the Card Game, where you never lose and have to replay a scenario. Instead, you'll get bonuses or penalties on the next scenario you play based on how well you did in the last one. Also, the narrative will alter based on how you perform. All of this adds up to a palpable excitement when I'm about to try out a new scenario. I'm listing my final point as a mix, although for me it's a pro, and that's the balance of chaos and control in the game. You can never perfectly plan everything in a turn, so you always have to leave yourself partially vulnerable to the crazy antics the armies might get into. Near the end of the scenario, the difference between an army unit moving or striking might spell victory or defeat for your sides. Now, I happen to adore games that give you a tactical puzzle but still introduce randomness into the mix with either dice rolls or, in this case, card draws. However, some gamers might have the perception that too much of the game relies on how the cards fall, and it could lead to some negative experiences for certain players. I'm a big fan of Dawn of Peacemakers. It's the sort of game I find myself thinking about frequently even after I finish playing. The uniqueness of the design, the engaging narrative, the consistent campaign, the unlocking of new elements, all of it really gets me excited to play. Add on the engaging, challenging, somewhat chaotic gameplay, and I'm totally hooked. That being said, the game is not for everyone. Having some turns where little to nothing happens can make some of the scenarios drag a bit. Additionally, if you don't have a tolerance for and appreciation of some chaos and randomness in your game, I'd recommend staying away because you're not going to get away from it here. I'll also note that I think the solo and two-player game is the best because you have a lot of cards and can more strongly influence the play of the game. With three or four players, while there is still a good amount of cooperation, it feels like you just don't do quite as much as I'd like on your turn. But if you can 
can get past those few concerns, this is an engaging and gorgeous game that I highly recommend. Good gaming, everyone!